with Core Decentralized Technologies, a company that's selling blockchain-based software mesh networks and enterprise software solutions to democratize connectivity. And so with me, let's start with Chairman uh, Michael Loebscher, um, and then we'll hit each one of you to give us an update. So tell me, Michael, let's start with you. I mean, what's the latest, what's going on with Core since we last spoke? Well, again, great to be here. Thank you very much. I think what uh, is most important, last time we touched a bit on our architecture of our software, we touched a bit on the applications that we uh, have developed and around the security industry. So, as I said, the software is ready to uh, be released. And we right here in uh, New York uh, at this stage, uh, we've acquired a uh, public shell and we're preparing uh, the software and uh, the systems to go live. So uh, we're preparing to set the stage where we can go public with the software and uh, with mm -hmm. the company. Okay. And then, Rossi, tell me why the hell this blockchain software is so unique. Thank you so much. Uh, like we develop our blockchain on a decentralized manner. That means we can just uh, make the blockchain itself open source. All the people can contribute and also we are distributing on Luna Mesh system. That means we don't need even the internet. Is it like internet 2.0 for the people? All the blockchain services can be delivered on Luna Mesh network and everybody can just uh, use our services or the centralized application on top of it. We have also the possibility with our blockchain to be scalable, to reach more people, make more transactions per second. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we just have an uh, amount which we can up to 10,000 transactions per second and then we will be on the competing with the maj major transaction providers in the world. Then we also developed this uh, YLM smart contract functionality which gives us the opportunity to build the centralized application on top of a blo blockchain and we don't need even the internet connectivity that, that for that then we can stream on Luna Mesh Network decentralized application mm -hmm. powered by a uh, YLM smart contract language which is secure and the security is improved in a uh, YLM mm -hmm. smart contract language. Yeah. With the eco-friendliness in the Luna Mesh Network we are consuming all, all, only with small devices 6 watts which is really small amount of uh, energy and these six watts uh, are uh, used for the verifying the transaction for streaming the information then we can use all these small IoT devices what we are using in ho uh, home or somewhere else even smart cities several use cases like uh, boats cars and so on okay. and then we also implement the HD wallets which means that everybody who is doing the payment don't have only one wallet but it's plenty of wallet connected together we are the first one in the world which developed that and is it used in our blockchain in ED448. Mm -hmm. And then, so, um, okay, just tell me a little, last time we talked to me, you kind of explained the mesh networks and how that was going to democratize connectivity and the transactions. We talked about the digital ID. I mean, describe the application as it is right now. Thank you very much, Jane. Yes, um, <clears throat> so having built this entire ecosystem, and as our last conversation, we stated that it, it all starts with digital identity. Now, it's the first, the world's first blockchain-based decentralized digital identity where there are no servers where data is stored or anything and you as the individual are in control of your data. And this is uh, primarily to actually comply with financial regulations and it's fully GDPR compliant, uh, Consumer Protection Act compliant. It's also focused on um, uh, you know, uh, refugees and uh, immigrants. Uh, it's also focused on providing digital identity to identify not just an individual but also companies. And this this whole digital identity is what allowed us to be able to comply with all our other services. So what we did is is we actually built. Um, a, a, decentralized um, or a, a hybrid exchange which is uh, it's got the speed of a centralized exchange but it's got the security of a decentralized exchange and we can of course trade crypto to crypto crypto to fiat uh, fiat to fiat and then uh, we can also do assets securities commodities uh, we can also trade um, uh, stock shares and bonds because we're currently busy implementing the fixed protocol for that uh, then we also with the exchange we have an instant swapping um, so you can actually pay in on already prior to your payment you can already decide in which currency it should be now um, 
having that part, we then built uh, um, uh, Corp Pay, which is our payment gateway where you can pay in any form of digital asset. And then also with debit cards and things, this is for merchant accounts. And you can also use the, utilize the instant swapping. So uh, merchants can actually accept more currencies, but still hold only few which they can swap into, uh, which they're comfortable with. Then what we did is, is uh, we also built a new banking application, which is called uh, Wool Money. And this is actually banking as a service. What we did with the banking uh, application, it's sort of like a dashboard where you can uh, house fest your uh, fiat currencies and your bank accounts, but you can also house fest um, crypto. Or, or digital assets and the reason why we can do that is because of the digital identity because we can KYC wallets and we can check origin of funds we can check proof of funds we can verify the individual we can verify where it's being transferred to so all that KYC and everything is actually done there then what we did is is we took the financial sector having the exchange and having the banking as a service platform and we built a decentralized um, uh, settlement platform where we decentralize liquidity for financial institutions as well as uh, exchanges on a peer-to-peer -peer basis and uh, we can actually do a, a digital settlement in 42 seconds anywhere in the world so mm -hmm. if you want to transfer funds from the US currency agnostic but let's say you transfer US dollars and it needs to be in euro paid in in 42 seconds the actual assets are there it's not it, it's not an IOU or or how the current system is working mm -hmm. where there needs to be settlement accounts right, and these yeah. types of things so it's like pending and yeah <laughs> exactly and right. then what we did is is having built this whole financial sector we then uh, went into the marketplace and we built uh, Toktoki which is our e-commerce platform um, it's it, it's like a, an Amazon like a global shopping center but it's a peer-to-peer -peer borderless decentralized uh, platform and what we did there is first and foremost you can customize your store the way that you want to with your corporate identity then what we did is is we actually um, implemented APIs and oracles that you can connect in a centralized environment so if you have a Shopify if you have a WooCommerce or whichever website you have you can actually integrate that maintain it exactly as it is you don't need to learn new software or anything and it can feed the information into that store that you're managing and the reason why these these companies and uh, merchants would want to do this is because we built what is called the discovery section and a multi-cart. The discovery section basically allows you to search for a particular product, but uh, you can search multiple products and you can find the best deal for that particular product anywhere in the world. So if someone's having a special somewhere else and the shipping is cheaper and you can buy it for cheaper, why not buy it mm -hmm. for cheaper? A deal's a deal. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but what we've also done is, is you can, uh, with the multi-card, you can now actually purchase from multiple merchants in multiple countries, in multiple currencies, um, uh, multiple products with a single transaction because we've got the exchange and the payment gateway which is integrated and with the smart contracts it can actually split the payment and pay out to the merchants what we also did is is we we created a, a stable token which is actually created um, a, a secondary market for these types of products where merchants can earn more money and the user that has actually purchased it can earn more money because once you have the product and you have the um, actual uh, um, bill of lading and shipping documents and you have the funds which are put into a smart contract and held that value is stable and it cannot actually fluctuate so we take that and put that into a stable environment and for high volatile times in markets certain people want to exit at a particular time and be in a stable environment and this is much more cost effective in that stable my, uh, environment that has got a real stable tangible value behind it so having built this we then also went uh, with the application with Toktoki and we built content recognition where you can recognize any video, image, audio as well as real time. Mm -hmm. So this actually makes uh, the e-commerce platform, not just an e-commerce platform, but it makes it a supportive marketing medium for merchants to actually have a true ROI on their investment of their marketing campaigns and an immediate call to action for users. So if you've ever sat and uh, watched a TV series or watched a TV show and there's a couch or a lamp or a jacket that you like, for you to go and search on the internet, it's quite hard to find these products. But now you can just sit casually, scan it with your mobile phone, pick up the product, and instantaneously purchase it. Mm -hmm. And focusing on video, what we did is, is we then actually had a look at how video streaming is taking place. And we built a serverless, borderless, peer-to-peer -peer 
decentralized video streaming platform. But the differentiator that we have is, is because you have the core pass and the digital identity, your videos now actually become an, a, a, a digital attribute which you can actually assign in the blockchain to your digital identity. And this is, this is what differentiates us. It's a decentralized digital rights management which is utilized in the blockchain but actually assigned to your corporate identity, or, or not your corporate, but to your digital identity. Mm -hmm. And then what we did is, is having, having done that, we actually built a video calling platform which is seamlessly synced and we built an OBS for the streaming, so the on-demand broadcast streaming because to get content on is extremely hard and you need several applications but here you don't even need to download one application it's all browser based and it's fully secured you can have secured rooms you can have someone identify themselves prior to actually entering into the room and it's an unimpenetrable communication and using that same software you don't have to actually store the videos on your uh, local device you, it gets stored into the channel where you secure it and um, if someone wants to share, so let's say if Doug, for example, has a channel and I have a channel, and Doug is charging someone a monthly subscription to view his content, he can ask me permission to utilize my video and it enters into an immediate smart contract where I can get my royalty fees paid instantaneously. It, it puts a whole new environment for digital rights management and for copyright infringement and for royalties to take care of the people that are actually producing it because we don't see content as content, we see content as IP. Mm. And that, that differentiates us. So we also use this software and also built it into a mobile application where you can have a peer-to-peer -peer video calling and messaging application like WhatsApp, but yeah. entirely decentralized, end-to-end -end okay. encrypted, secured, unimpenetrable. It's, it's, it's unblock uh, unblockable also. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is basically the entire ecosystem that it consists <laughs> of. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. So, well, and, and Doug, I mean, talk to me about, because I remember last time you spoke about how this was kind of a revolutionary thing. Um, I mean, how do you see it as an investor and a board member? Um, what should investors know about what they're doing? You know, Jane, honestly, <laughs> in my opinion, this is the hottest deal I've seen since being on Wall Street. In 20 plus years, this is the hottest deal I've ever seen. Okay. Um, I mean, you talked about revolutionary. Just think about never having to log in for connectivity again. You'll never have to say, what's my Wi-Fi password? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to log in one time, and then that's going to be it. You'll always be logged in, in an airplane, at sea, whatever, because of this technology. It's Internet 2.0. The speeds are incredible. Um, you know, you're standing next to your router in your house, and you're at 25 megabits per second. They stream at 600 megabits per second. Mm -hmm. And their transaction speeds, 42 seconds. That's a global economy reset. Yeah. Now let's let's look at the valuation of this company. It's valued at 200 million. Okay, um, the comps out there that have less than a quarter of their IP are valuing at 10 to 20 billion. What kind of multiple is that for an investor? Well, that's 100x. Okay, and these guys have more. So it's incredibly exciting. Um, as mentioned, uh, uh, the chairman mentioned that uh, they've purchased. Uh, fully compliant shell mm -hmm. company, and they're looking to, uh, they have the option to reverse into that shell. They're doing a private placement now for 40 million, mm -hmm. which is 20% of the company that you know investors can purchase. The threshold for that is 25,000. You must be an accredited investor to make that investment. Um, the CFO of the company is Chris Strachan, and uh, he'll be uh, organizing and um, um, looking over that, Perkins Coie is our uh, attorneys, uh, KPMG are the uh, accountants, and uh, we have a U.S. corporation that, that Chris is, uh, is handling there. So um, it's, as I said, I, I, I'm just extremely excited about this. Um, I, I see the um, prospects just being amazing. Yeah. Um, so, Michael, with these kind of speeds, does that lead to arbitrage, secondary markets? Yes, um, w what we're currently doing is some of the use cases that we are immediately implementing is uh, the digitization of um, passive bonds, 
We are uh, working currently on uh, two passive bonds, uh, somewhere in the region of about a half a billion per bond. One, and, uh, one is an A-plus bond, which is a bricks and mortar bond, and the other one is uh, a uh, life settlement contract bond, which is a triple B-plus uh, uh, bond. And what we do is we're creating a secondary trade environment where we're actually using an alternative investment fund uh, structure. As I said to you, we, uh, we've got the architecture and everything ready, and it's already been developed. So this architecture is in the standard in a regulated environment. We uh, put a uh, funding platform together. And then uh, what we do is we have orphan companies, or as some people call it, uh, SPVs, which are in regulated uh, digital asset uh, trading environments where we fraction these bonds. And then this uh, uh, investments could be applied in the market for uh, secondary trade transactions, something like a uh, trade finance or where you could, in fact, actually do arbitrage. Our... Um, specifically developed uh, platform uh, provide the possibility of where you have a uh, highly uh, fluctu fluctuating market in a digital asset environment for exit into this uh, particular platform and it will quote you a rate uh, upfront on whether you want to participate. So what you can do is you can then under, underwrite a transaction with a digital uh, asset that you have purchased mm -hmm. in the secondary market. And again, you know what's significant about that First time this has ever been done. No one's ever done something like this on a blockchain before. There are three blockchains in the world. There's Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum, when you boil everything down. Now there's a fourth blockchain. So how big is that going to be? I look forward to updates as you guys go through the, uh, the capital raising process. So <laughs> thank you so much, Doug and Oki and Michael and Rosti, for coming in. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you Jane.